Amsterdam met de Stu Stampede. En I have the opportunity to talk with Steve Denning. And I have a couple of more questions for him. So I'm going to ask him now. Okay, Steve, we are uh, at Stu's uh, Stampede here in Amsterdam. Yes. Um, well, I'm, I'm a, a frequent reader of your, of your, of your blog on, on Forbes. Um, I noticed that you always talk about companies, uh, stock market companies. You give examples, good examples, bad examples. Uh, why are you doing that? Well, people like to uh, see what it's like in reality. It's, it's one thing to talk about the theory of management. So it's another to see people actually practicing it. And it's one thing to say that uh, this will make you a lot of money. It's another thing to see, well, uh, Apple went from being a bankrupt company to the biggest company in the world in, in 15 years. Uh, so <laughs> go from nothing to the biggest company in the world. You see what this can accomplish, what Salesforce uh, got from nothing to uh, growing 40% a year over 10 years. You see the massive uh, uh, growth of the company and you see the, the response of the stock market to realize that these are the companies of the future. These are the ones which are putting the old dinosaurs uh, out of business unless they change. The Walmarts, the GEs, the, the Cisco's, uh, these firms which are still to a large extent being managed in the old way. Uh, you see that the stock market basically says uh, you have no future. We do not believe that you have a future and unless those companies listen to that message uh, they, the stock market will be right, they won't have a future. Now, of course, in all of those organizations, there are uh, oases of excellence. There are oases of agile. There are oases of radical management. There are oases of people who have seen the future, who are organizing their part of the organization to delight the customer. But often they're working in a larger organization, which is being run on a very different dynamic, still being run on how do we make money out of the customer? How do we get a bigger share of the customer's wallet? And uh, so those oases uh, won't survive unless the overall company eventually changes its way and sees that its future really belongs with the practices of those oases and not with the practices of the 20th century, which they are currently being run by. Yeah, and, and, and you live in the United States, you're talking about U.S. companies. No. Uh, how do you see your role in that, that, uh, in, in that change? Well, I'm uh, an observer, I'm a, uh, an evangelist. I think uh, I'm excited by what I've seen of uh, this phase change that's happening. I'm excited that there are companies out there that are doing it. I'm excited that Agile uh, software has shown the way that it resolved a fundamental uh, conundrum that manage general management couldn't solve for really a century, that is how do you have both disciplined execution with continuous innovation and satisfied workers. That uh, problem was yeah. uh, the real uh, puzzle of the, of the 20th century because uh, efforts were made to solve one piece of the, the problem and they made the other aspects worse. And so there was this oscillation between, well, let's delight the customer, oh, that costs too much, so let's cut back on that. And so you had this continuous oscillation. What Agile uh, showed the way was you can do it all. You can both delight the customer and uh, have disciplined execution and have continuous innovation and have uh, satisfied workers. And uh, to have all of those things working in sync uh, becomes this huge, powerful economic engine which is basically changing the world. But how can we inspire the boardroom? Because you say, well, you have this oasis in, 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 in the companies, yeah. but the companies are bigger, so they're steered, let's say, from uh, the top department. Yeah. How, how do we enter, how will they understand what, what they need to do? Money. This is about making a lot more money. And uh, for those, we can inspire them with the vision. We can inspire them with, uh, this is a better way. It's a more ethical way to run organizations. It's a more fun way to run organizations. It's, it's uh, better for customers, better for workers, better for shareholders. In the long run, the economics are what will uh, force boards to uh, take account of this because it's simply a much more profitable way. The firms that do this will put the other firms out of business. So this is already happening. You, you're seeing these big old firms struggling just to stay afloat. All these the newcomers are growing exponentially. So it's, it's happening. Uh, it's, it's really a question of whether uh, when these uh, 
boards wake up, not weather. It's, uh, they have no choice. So in your role also in this is trying to wake them up? I'm, yes, I'm an evangelist. I'm a reporter on what's happening and uh, I'm flagging the issues <laughs> and, uh, and helping, and helping inspire people uh, who are doing this, helping them to see, as we're doing here at Stosis, to see that this is really part of a large movement, much larger than any of us here. Uh, and often we think, when we see these kind of changes, we think, well, I'm all alone or I'm, not many people are really grasping this. In fact, there is really, if you add up all the different parts of the movement, if you add up with what Gary Hamill is doing and the uh, uh, Management Innovation Exchange, what uh, the Drucker Foundation is doing, uh, all of these different movements are, in fact, coalescing around a set of ideas of what this phase change is about. So if we put all these movements together, then we can have the momentum to actually accelerate and facilitate the change so it would be much quicker and more elegant than it would be if it happens in a very chaotic and disorderly way. And so the main message to the, the bigger companies is uh, wake up. Uh, wake up, uh, get with the future. Uh, uh, realize, look what's happening outside, look what's happening inside the organization, see what the best companies are doing, and uh, realize that this is the future. And start delighting your customers. <laughs> delight the customer. This is three words, sums up the whole movement. Okay. Thanks, Steve. Thanks for your time. Thanks, Freddy. Thanks for the inspiration. One blog on Forbes that I like the most by Steve Denny, and it's called The Best Kept Management Secret in the World, and it's about Agile. And, and in this blog he explains that good ideas most of the time take a long time to be deployed in practice when they come from the area where you wouldn't expect them. Well, one of the management puzzles in the past years, past decades even, has always been how to combine execution with innovation. Because if you really focus on optimized execution, you take away all the innovation power of your organization. On the other hand, when you're trying to increase innovation, you need slack, which takes down execution. So it has always been a problem to combine execution and innovation. Well, in my field, software development, we solve that puzzle. And how we do that, well, is by working in an agile way. By working towards a long-term vision, which we can change so we can innovate but at the same time working in short sprints of two weeks in which we get actionable execution. So we have a working product every two weeks, but still we can innovate towards the future. And I think that blog by Steve really says it all. And it's also very helpful to explain to the C-suite why Agile works. So combining execution and innovation, I think, is the piece of the puzzle that Agile will bring to our field. That's the power of Agile. That's the power of Scrum. This video blog is sponsored by ProAwareness. And uh, Frans, have you taped it? Yeah, we need it's a wrap. And what do you think about it? Well, this innovation and execution thing you were talking about reminded me of the weekend. Oh, why? Well, I got myself a new girlfriend, so I was already innovating. Yeah? Yeah. So now I'm waiting for the execution. Execution? Of our new mother-in-law. <laughs>